Good morning, everyone, and welcome to this edition of Conversation Daily News. I'm your host, Cyrus Webb. Glad you all could join us once again. Well, it's a brand new day. It's a brand new week, which means it's a brand new opportunity for you to do something amazing, and it all begins today. But of course, you have your news headlines coming up on this Monday. We have the truth of the day with Mary Ellen Zaganovich in today's Entertainment Spotlight, giving part of my conversation with Dr. Otis Gowdy Jr., discussing the Omicron variant and what you need to know to protect yourself. Enjoy today's program. For Conversation Daily News, I'm Cyrus Webb with your Monday headlines. In national news, taxpayers face overloaded IRS as filing season opens today. An IRS worker shortage, an enormous workload from administrating pandemic-related programs, and stall legislation that would have given the agency billions of dollars for more processing returns will combine to cause taxpayers pain this filing season. The IRS right now has unacceptable backlogs, and the customer service that people are receiving is not what the American public deserves, White House Press Secretary Jen Psaki acknowledged on Friday. The agency has not been equipped with the resources to adequately serve taxpayers in normal times, let alone during a pandemic. She stressed that the problems predate the Biden administration, and she urged understanding for beleaguered workers already set up with huge backlogs. It's going to take some work. It's going to take some time. And I think people need to understand that they need funding, Saki said. Agency officials are already warning filers that in many areas, we are unable to deliver the amount of service and enforcement that taxpayers and tax systems deserve and that they need. Delays in processing are to be expected, especially because the IRS says it is still working through 2020 tax returns. During the 2020 budget year, the IRS processed more than 240 million tax returns and issued roughly $736 billion in refunds, including $268 billion in stimulus payments, according to the latest IRS data. In that same time frame, 59.5 million people called or visited an IRS office. Deadlines to file have been extended in the past two years due to the pandemic. It is unclear whether this year the agency will offer similar leeway to taxpayers. There will be plenty of new issues to navigate this year. For example, individuals who are eligible to claim the child tax credit and have gotten advance payments throughout the year may get a smaller refund than they normally would see. People who did not get stimulus checks that they were qualified for as part of the pandemic relief package might yet be able to claim a recovery rebate credit on their taxes. On last Thursday, the IRS released a list of top five things to remember with suggestions for taxpayers on what documents to pull together and what to do if their 2020 returns still have not been processed. In more national news, Kentucky's largest school district resuming in-person class. Kentucky's largest public school district plans to resume in-person class today after moving to remote learning for eight days during a rise in COVID-19 cases among teachers and staff. Jefferson County Public Schools in Louisville said Sunday that a decrease in positive cases among staff and a drop in the number of employees in quarantine makes it possible for students to return to classrooms. We believe there are now enough staff members, substitute teachers, bus drivers, and other staff available to safely reopen our school buildings, a statement from the school district said. Buses resumed regular routes and food services began again in cafeterias, the district said. In-school COVID-19 testing will resume for students. District officials will continue to monitor case numbers, the statement also said. We did not reach this decision to return to in-person classes lightly, said the district. We know this is a difficult issue for many parents, but we feel it is important to get students back to in-person learning with their teachers and classmates. In more national news, year two of the Biden administration, the president plans more public outreach and less legislating. President Joe Biden has launched into his second year in office with a new focus on making fatigue Americans believe they're better off under his leadership as he embraces a pareback agenda before the midterm elections. The persistence of the coronavirus, rising inflation, and congressional gridlock have exacted a bitter toll on Biden's approval rating and threatened a midterm routing for his party, but the president sees no need for a major shift in direction. Instead, Biden told Democratic National Committee members During a virtual grassroots event last week, the Democrats broadly have to offer a clearer contrast with Republicans going forward. In business news, stocks fall have worst week since March of 2020. Stocks fell again on Wall Street on Friday, capping off the worst weekly drop for the S&P 500 since the start of the pandemic. Investors have grown increasingly worried about rising inflation and how aggressive the Federal Reserve might be in raising interest rates to tamp it down. 
And finally, in entertainment news, Spider-Man comes back swinging, takes number one from screen. After spending one weekend in second place, Spider-Man No Way Home proved it still had some fight left. Sony's superhero Juggernaut swung back to first place in its sixth weekend in theaters and became the sixth highest grossing film of all time globally. That made the top five movies over the weekend. Number one, Spider-Man No Way Home with $14 million. Number two, Scream with $12 million. Number three, Sing 2 with $6 million. Number four, Redeeming Love with $4 million. And number five, The King's Man with $2 million. Cyrus Webb, Conversations Daily News. It's now time for the Truth of the Day with Mary Ellen Zagavis. Mary Ellen, take it away. Hi, this is Mary Ellen with your Truth of the Day. Confront your obligations with confidence. Confronting your obligations with confidence allows you to conquer your fears. Now you can move on to your next phase of personal growth. Your fears of failure stop you from moving forward. As you confront your fears directly and with confidence, you find these misperceptions of reality dissolving into your imagined false reality. You can now move forward, leaving your fears behind you. Any fear that lingers, you confront with your newfound level of confidence. Today, realize any ambitious goals you set are goals you know you can achieve. No challenge is insurmountable. Enjoy the day. We are part of my conversation coming up with Dr. Otis Gowdy Jr. in today's Entertainment Spotlight. Stay with us as you're listening to Conversation Daddy News. For Conversation Daddy News, I'm Cyrus Webb with the Entertainment Spotlight. Dr. Otis Gowdy Jr. joined me recently on Conversations Live, the radio show, to talk about COVID-19 and the Omicron variant and what you need to know is a bit of our conversation. What is the latest on the severity of it compared to uh, other versions of COVID-19? Well, one of the things is we are seeing that the Omicron variant is more contagious than the previous variants. Uh, and we're seeing that, uh, more, therefore, that more people are getting sick. And, and we're seeing that even if, uh, you have, if those people who have not been vaccinated are coming down sicker quicker. And that's what is filling up our hospital systems, really, uh, in the state of Mississippi, and I'm hearing all across the country. Uh, those people who have not been vaccinated are more susceptible to this variant. Uh, and that means more hospitalizations, um, more uh, cogging up our health care system, uh, so that people can't get the treatment that they need. That's why it's so important uh, to get the vaccine. The vaccine is effective against this variant. Um, yes, uh, we're seeing that people are getting sick, uh, and that still the dearth of that is still very, very high. Uh, people are still being on a ventilator, and unfortunately, we are still losing people to this virus, regardless of it being uh, the Omicron variant. Why is it important to get the COVID-19 booster? Why is that so important if you've been fully vaccinated? Well, the booster, actually, we're seeing that uh, the effectiveness of the uh, the vaccine goes down over time. And that's where the booster comes in to keep the uh, effectiveness uh, and the protection high against uh, uh, the coronavirus in and of itself. That's the importance of the booster. Uh, we, we're seeing that after about five to six months, the, uh, the effectiveness of uh, the virus, uh, of the vaccine is, is going down. The booster actually helps keep that in, in climb. So I'm encouraging my patients, even if they've had the first two doses, it's important to get the third, uh, the booster shot. Cyrus Webb, Conversations Daily News. We thank you all for tuning in to this edition of Conversations Daily News, but we have to get on tomorrow's more news. Truth of the Day with Mary Ellen Zaganovich, and of course your entertainment spotlight. Until then, I'm your host, Cyrus Webb, saying, as always, enjoy your day, enjoy your life, enjoy your world. Thank you all for choosing Conversations Daily News today. Let's make today amazing. Take care.